What's going on guys? Jacob Orth back here with another video of Jacob's Life in Vegas coming to you guys today with a video to help you make money. <laughs> That's what today's video is all about, helping you make money. This is going to uh, particularly pertain to people uh, who live here in Las Vegas and are trying to get some extra money, you know, regardless of whatever your economic situation is at the moment, and people who are getting ready to move here to Las Vegas who either may not have a job lined up yet or maybe they only have part-time work or maybe they just got here and they're working part-time and they need to do something to help them make more money, whether it's just for yourself, whether you're you know, with a spouse or you have kids to support or whatever the case is, I'm going to do what I can today in this video to give you some skills to help you make more money here in Las Vegas. So today's video, what it's gonna center around is using several platforms. I wrote this list um, based off of Craigslist because these are a lot of tips that I used to use in college to make money. But you can also use this for OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that. So this is how to use those platforms, how to leverage them to make extra money so it could be a good side hustle for a lot of you who need that extra money. The first tip I'll give you guys is a good place to make some extra money is at estate sales, okay? If you go to an estate sale, uh, which is very similar to like going to a garage sale, except estate sales, a lot of times it's, you know, someone's selling their estate, they're selling their belongings, you know, somebody passed away. And the one thing here in Southern Nevada that I think is probably a bigger factor than other places, because oftentimes estate sales happen, you know, someone, older passes away and their kids are the ones having to sell the stuff. The kids are the ones handling it, not all the time, but their kids can be the ones handling and they're selling the stuff. And especially here in Southern Nevada where we have lots and lots of retirees from out of state, like three quarters of our population in Nevada is from somewhere else. So you may have someone who passed away here in Las Vegas and Henderson and their kid or their kids are coming from Wisconsin to handle the estate, to try to liquidate the estate, to handle all the stuff they can. So a lot of times their kids, they're not necessarily looking just to get top dollar for stuff. They want stuff gone. They want it gone. They want it. They want someone else to take it. They can get some money for it. Great. But they're not usually looking to haggle big time on getting things for top dollar, especially when they're coming from another state. They want it gone. They want it out of there. So that means you can have a good chance to go down there. You can score a good deal on something that you can go ahead and flip and you can resell it later, whether you resell it on Craigslist or Facebook or offer up or just, you know, to someone in your neighborhood. You can score a good deal sometimes at estate sales. Tip number two is that when you're on Craigslist, check the help wanted section. Sometimes you can get really cool free stuff. Well, I mean, it's technically not free because you are helping, you're trading your labor for something free. But I do this numerous times uh, where I help people with something they said, hey, I need help cleaning this out. Uh, one time I had a lady who, um, she had a storage unit she had to clean out, so I helped her clean that out. She had some, you know, musical um, equipment she gave me. I was able to sell that. Uh, another time was a lady who, her and her husband had a rental property, and their tenant moved out and left a bunch of stuff in the garage. And the guy was actually really big into like trains, so I got like some train sets and other stuff like that, train related. Um, items that I was also able to sell and do that kind of thing. So sometimes if you're willing to just, you know, help someone out for free, you know, or just give them your labor, you can wind up getting something in exchange and then you can sell that. The third tip I'm gonna give you guys is something that happens here in Las Vegas and happens really all over the place, are community-wide garage sales. So if you ever take a minute to just search on Google, you can find them on, you know, Craigslist and platforms like that. But if you just do a Google search for Vegas or Henderson or uh, even certain neighborhoods here in Vegas, a couple times a year, they'll post that they're gonna have a community-wide garage sale. So again, people are getting rid of stuff. People are trying to sell stuff. They're trying to get rid of it and get it out of their house. So if you find the dates when they're gonna have those community-wide garage sales, you can hit a lot of places in a small area because the whole community is participating in it. You can hit a lot of houses and a lot of places in a small area in a short time because the community is getting together and having a garage sale. So look for community-wide garage sales here in Southern Nevada. The fourth tip I'll give you guys when it comes to checking Craigslist or other platforms to find stuff where you can get a deal is check the free section. <laughs> check out that free section on there because sometimes, again, you can get stuff at a good deal because it's free, but sometimes you get something valuable because, again, you never know if it's a landlord who has, you know, their tenant left. They've got a bunch of stuff they left in there. Here, take it. You know, it could be a family member who moved out and, you know, they left a bunch of stuff with their relatives and their relatives like, I don't want this. Someone just take the damn thing. Just get rid of it. Get it out of here. So be sure to take a peek at that free section every once in a while because there could be something of value in there. The 
fifth tip I'll give you guys is you can set, actually use apps, and you can actually set notifications for certain keywords or certain terms to get notified when something gets posted. So I remember doing this um, years ago, I almost got a, a Lego set. Like Legos were so good. If you could ever find those and you could resell them, Legos were money. But you can actually set that up um, to get notified if uh, there's certain things you're looking for, certain maybe you have a specialty in something like that. Because I used to sell a lot of this stuff at the flea market in San Jose, at the Capital Expressway flea market is where I used to sell a lot of this stuff. So certain things like tools, lots of garden tools, lots of things like that, landscaping tools did very well there. So if I ever came across something like that, like I said earlier, Legos, those are popular to sell online. Uh, but things there were certain things I would look for that I knew if they ever came on there, I wanted to get notified immediately because when it did, there was just somebody else was gonna was gonna grab it. So you can get set it up to get a notification. That way you can be one of the first people to see it. You can respond to it and say, hey, I want to come pick this up, I will buy this, I'll purchase it for this price, wherever the case is, and you can get it before someone else does. I found an article that I will link down below that does a, a pretty good job of explaining uh, how you can set that up and it gives two different ways on there you can do it. So I'll put the article down below if you guys wanna take a look at that to set up notifications. The sixth tip that I will give you guys for being able to get a good deal on some of these platforms is, um, this is one I would see on Craigslist a lot, uh, and I've seen this for years, is people who make posts, they post something for sale and they don't put any pictures, okay? When people are looking to buy something, they wanna usually be able to see what they're gonna buy, right? Whether you're shopping for something in person or whether you're shopping online on Amazon, you wanna see pictures of what it is that you put, could potentially be spending your money on. So when people look at posts and they don't see pictures, lots of times people are just gonna say, screw it, and they just bypass it. So buyers just pass all these posts that don't have any pictures on them. Now, the person who posted the, um, you know, the ad or wherever they're trying to sell, they either were too lazy to put pictures up or they just don't know how to do it. So if you post something online and it's not selling, usually people just start lowering the price on it because they want to sell. They eventually want the thing to be gone. So sometimes you can score a deal if you see a product and you're like, yeah, maybe it's worth a shot, maybe it's worth taking a look. You know, this could be valuable. Whatever the case is, you're willing to go down there, see it in person because nobody else is willing to go down there. The other person didn't post any pictures and you can score a deal on something because they didn't post pictures but you were willing to take the action, go and take a look in person. The seventh tip I'll give you guys is good times to post that you have something for sale. So you wanna post pictures, okay? You got pictures, you wanna post those with whatever it is you're trying to sell, but a great time to post this uh, is Friday afternoons. Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Why? Because people get paid on Friday. That's when people get their paycheck, where they get paid weekly, every two weeks, once a month, whatever the case is, that is when most people get paid is on Friday. So they get paid Friday, they go home, and a lot of people, they sit down, over the weekend and they'll just sit online and they'll start shopping for stuff. And I had a guy tell me that one time. He saw something I had posted that I was selling in San Jose. And he goes, oh yeah, man, I just got home from work and I sat down and just started looking online for stuff. <laughs> like I just got paid, went home, he's ready looking to spend his paycheck. So that's how it goes sometimes. So a lot of times over the weekend, Friday afternoon, Friday evening, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening when people are home, they're chilling out on the weekend, they've got paid, they've got money over the weekend, they might be looking to spend that money, that's when it's a good time to post, not you know Tuesday morning. You wanna hit those weekend times, the afternoons and the evenings. Tip number eight is the flip side of that equation. So when it comes to you being able to buy stuff and get a good deal, what is the best time of the month you think? It's towards the end of the month, okay? So like I was talking earlier about how people get paid, you know, on Friday and they've got money for the weekend. Well, at the end of the month, people have what coming up? They've got rent coming up on the first. They gotta pay rent on the first of the month. So lots of times you can get really good deals on stuff towards the end of the month or the first few days of the month because people have, you know, X number of days until they become late on their rent payment. So lots of times people at the end of the month, they'll, they'll even say it sometimes, say, hey, I'm selling this because I need, you know, another 200 bucks for rent this month or whatever the case is. So again, end of the month or very beginning of the month, that's when you can score good deals on stuff because people have to pay rent. They have rent due, so they're trying to get some extra cash. So it's a good chance for you to get a deal on something, buy it, you can flip it and sell it somewhere else. The ninth tip I'll give you guys, and this one is very, very beneficial. Uh, I remember learning about this one years ago and it was helpful, is when you do keyword research. Now, I don't mean, it's not as complex as, what, as that may sound to some of you, but keywords, so like when you're searching on Craigslist or you're searching on um, you know, Facebook Marketplace, wherever the case is, there's certain phrases you wanna try to do that 
give you more of an advantage uh, to get a deal on something. So if you put in the phrase like on Craigslist or any of these platforms, moving out of state, moving out of country, moving out of the country, moving out of the state, moving out of town, things like that, there's a good chance you'll find someone who is moving out of state. They're moving out of country, right? So what do those people have to do? They have stuff they need to get rid of. So once again, they may not necessarily be looking to get the best dollar for something. They just want it gone. Their biggest thing is they want it gone. If they can get some money, great. Or they want to get something for it, cool. But a lot of times their big incentive is they just want product gone. So you can go in there and you can get a great deal on stuff. So yeah, phrases like moving out of state, moving out of country, moving out of town, things like son or daughter, because oftentimes parents will have kids who move out or they go to college somewhere else and they say, hey, this, this couch is left over here. It was from my son. He had it. This TV used to be my daughter's TV. She now went to college. So things like that, especially as the um, colleges start like their fall semester schedule when kids are moving out of home that's you can score deals on stuff like that too because the kids are gone parents don't want to hold on to the crap so like hey get this out of my place so phrases like that can be very valuable in helping you score a deal and speaking of kids moving out of the house going off to college living away from home and stuff like that here's tip number 10 the final tip that can be very helpful and this one worked for me very well in san jose um you want to familiar size your familiarize yourself with your local university with their semester schedule. Because these kids come, they move onto campus, they are there for the fall semester, and then they move out for the winter. So what do they do when they're moving out? They dump all kinds of stuff. You have kids going back home to California, to Ohio, to New York, to Japan, or to you know Brazil, or wherever they came from to live on campus. A lot of their stuff, they're not taking with them. So the end of the fall semester can be a good time um, to do it, but more kids, you know, graduate typically in the springtime. So end of spring semester, so usually sometime in December when the fall semester ends, or sometime in May, maybe June, but typically May, um, for the spring semester when that ends, so during finals week and stuff like that, when they have to be moved out. So when they have to be moved out, that week or so, uh, even some may finish finals earlier, so that couple weeks, I'll even say, towards the end of the semester, you can go around campus and you can score some deals because, you know, especially these kids, if their parents bought them this stuff, a lot of them don't value it, so they just toss this stuff out. They'll toss out nice clothes, they might toss out a nice video game. I got an Xbox game one time in the package, brand new, never been opened. I remember doing that, finding it outside San Jose State. Kids would just dump stuff all over the place. They had dumpsters out there, but also kids would just dump stuff on the sidewalk. So you could go and look through stuff, and I found that Xbox game that had never been opened. I put it on Craigslist, sold it for like 10 bucks cheaper than it was, brand new or something like that, and just within that day, it was gone. Some guy bought it, got my cash. It was a great deal. So your local uh, university, you know, end of the fall semester, end of the spring semester, maybe even end of the summer if there are some kids who are staying on campus for summer school, but get familiar with that when the move in and really the move out dates are. Those are big because you can go and you can score some good deals off the college kids who leave their stuff behind. Those are my 10 tips for you guys looking to make extra money here in Las Vegas, looking to have an extra side hustle, whatever the case is. Some people might turn this into a full-time hustle to make a full-time income doing this, but it's a good way to make extra money. It's a good way if you're between jobs, in a pinch, whatever the case is, you can get some extra money doing this. So I really hope you guys enjoyed these 10 tips. I want you guys to subscribe down below because I got all kinds of other great content coming on this channel, just like I've been doing for years. So subscribe, hit the bell, select all the notifications. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I appreciate you being so awesome. I am Jacob. This is my life in Vegas.